The chapter on Java arrays is quite extensive, uh, quite long. Um, we're going to touch on one dimension and two dimension arrays, and in this tutorial, we're just going to talk about uh, using one dimensional arrays in Java. Now, this is very similar to what we've done, what you should have done in Python, and we'll just look at uh, the syntax uh, quickly and see how uh, Java creates one dimensional arrays. There are two uh, declarations yet you can make um, for creating arrays. The first is to declare the size of the race, array. So we have a, uh, the type of array variable here. The square brackets are important for creating an array. This is just the name equals new. And when we see this new keyword, we know we're creating some type of object. Um, this is the type for each element, okay, and this has to match this here. Um, and this is the length, this is how many elements. Now, you can create and initialize an array in, in one statement if you know what all the initial values are, and you could use the second form here. Now, one of the questions which might be, well, what is an array? Is it a primitive? which we've talked about before, or is it an object? Well, an array is something that sort of falls in between. It really is an object as we're cre using this new keyword to create arrays. We can't extend uh, an array as we would with just any generic object. Uh, with any object, we could uh, overload uh, um, the methods and uh, extend by writing new methods. You can't do that with arrays. Um, so it's sort of an object and sort of a primitive. And there are some methods that you can use with an array. For instance, you can use a sort method and you can look up uh, some of the methods uh, that you can use with arrays. To use an array, it is simply uh, similar to Python in that you'd use the name, a square bracket, and you have an index here. And the very first element is 0, uh, and the next one is 1 and 2 and so on. I'm not sure if they use minus indices as Python does. I, I haven't seen that in this chapter. Here's a nice table which shows you some of the ways that you can uh, declare arrays. So this um, creates an integer array called numbers with 10 elements in it. Uh, when we do that, all the elements are initialized with zero. It's often better not to use just a number here, which uh, it could be thought of as a magic number, because if you have a lot of these, people are wondering, well, is that number significant? And if you want to change this number, uh, sometimes it's hard to know where this came from. So often it's good to create a constant, final int blank, so you're not going to change this of 10. And for your entire application, uh, you're going to use length so you have an arrays that are of this length. Now, if something comes up and you need to change the application significantly, you say, ah, okay, this meant something and I'm going to change this to 20 uh, right here. You wouldn't have to change these declaration statements. And you may have a number of declaration statements, each with the magic number 10. Here, if it's a, tied to a constant, you just need to change the constant in one place. The length doesn't need to be uh, come from a constant. You could read it in through an input statement and then use a declaration here. So we're, we're getting length from an input statement and declaring the size of an array here. This we've just seen. This is how to create uh, an integer array called squares and give them initial values. And we can do this with strings as well. Uh, you could have an array of string objects. If you have a double array, you can't initialize it with uh, an int array. Uh, this is not something you typically do anyway. So now what we're going to do is we're going to show some examples, uh, simple examples of using an array. Uh, you should go through your text. There are certainly many more 
uh, extensive examples uh, in this chapter in the text that you may want to refer to. Now we're going to create a, a bunch of examples that use one-dimensional arrays, and I encourage you to actually create these uh, along with uh, along with this video. I've created a project called Array Examples, and uh, from the main menu, I've just I've done a few exercises here. So the first is to simply create uh, um, an integer array called marks. It's got five elements in it and I've initialized them all at once. I've also created one with strings just to show that an array can contain integers or double precision numbers or strings or different uh, objects. I've also uh, done something here which is copy an array and let's talk a little bit more about uh, arrays. As we've said before an array is something uh, between a primitive and an object, but more like an object. So when we create this marks array here, we're really creating an array object or a structure in memory that has these values, 88, 84, and so on. So you can think of this as the object that's created in memory. And marks is the name that points to it. Now, when we do integer with this integer array notation, marks copy equals marks, what we're doing is we're not creating a new object. We're just saying that the name marks copy also points to this same object. Now, if you did a statement like this, marks, and let's suppose we're going to use the index 0, and we're going to say equals 76. Well, that's going to change this value. These arrays are mutable, they're changeable, we're going to put 76 here. But now if I used marks copy because this is also pointing to the same array and I indexed it with 0, this would return the 76, the value that was changed before. So this is the type of statement you would use here if you wanted to copy uh, one array to another name or basically have two names that point to the same array. Let's suppose we want to print the values that are in an array. A common way to do it is use a for loop where we have our for loop stepping between uh, indexes 0. So here i is going to start with 0 and it's going to go 1, 2, 3, and it's going to go up to um, marks copy dot length. So marks copy dot length, same as the marks array. So this is a length of 5. So our for loop is going to stop at 4 because we have a less than symbol here. Now what our for loop is going to do is it's going to index our copied array and it's just going to print it out. So we've got marks copy uh, 0 is going to get printed, then 1. So we're just printing the 0 element, then the 1 element, then the 2. And you can see that that's happening here. And I'm using the print command which doesn't put a line break at the end so I'm printing the number and then a space and it's just going to stay there then it's going to print another number and a space another number and a space and so on finally I print a new line here so that's using a for loop to iterate through a loop to print it out what if we wanted to initialize array so we're going to go back to our marks array and we're going to change the values here and we're going to put in these values, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And we're going to initialize it, because this looks like a loop, using a loop. So now we have j going from 0 to 4. And I've just put in here marks j uh, equals uh, j. So marks 0 is the first element of my array, and it's just going to equal my index, which is 0. So I'm putting these values in the first five locations of marks. Now if I printed out marks copy, it'd be the same thing because these two refer to the same object. I've also done an example here where here is an array of names. Printing out one of those names is simply a matter of just indexing it. So you'll see Cindy here. We've pulled out names three 
well, this is the zero element, this is one, this is two, this is three. I don't think Python supports the minus one, minus two, I'm not sure, uh, or sorry, that Java supports that, Python does, but. So, array element three will print out Cindy, which we can see here. Finally, now that we've initialized our array, let's print it out using what's called an enhanced format. And this is very similar to what we have in Python when we had for element in, uh, we don't call them arrays, we call them lists in uh, Python. So for element in list is a way of iterating through a list and element uh, picks off first time through it's the first element of the list and the next element and so on. Well this does the same thing for element in marks and we use the int because every element is an integer. So now marks because we've initialized marks to contain these values the very first time through element is going to contain a zero so when we print element it's going to print a zero which it does here. Next time through when it iterates through this loop, element is going to pick up the next value of marks and so we get uh, these values being print of the array being printed one after the other as you can see here. Now this is called an enhanced for loop and it's specifically designed for iterating across arrays. You cannot use this for um, changing values in the array. For instance, it wouldn't be proper to say marks element because element is not an index. Element is actually the value that you get or the, the current value that you're getting from the array. So this doesn't make sense. So these are some examples of uh, some basic examples of using single dimension arrays in Java. There are many more extensive uh, examples of that in your textbook.